Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to draw an expression for the area of a triangle, and I'll just call the triangle to be ABC, and that triangle is inscribed in a circle with radius R, okay? So, first of all, I'll just show you guys a picture, and in this video, I'll just show you guys how to write that expression, and the main goal is actually to show you that this triangle, if you want to have the biggest area, it has to be equilateral, but I will do that the next part. Anyway, here we have a circle, and we'll just put a triangle inside. That's what we mean to have an inscribed, um, inscribed a circle, right? So I will just say, you know, here are my three vertices, like this, and it can be any three points, you can make it slightly more dramatic. But let me just try to draw my picture better. So I will just say, here is the ABC triangle, like this. I will label this for my A, this is my B, and this is my C. And yeah, this is supposed to be a straight line, okay? So don't judge my picture, hopefully. Anyway, let me do it again, like this. Better, maybe? <laughs> anyway, when you go away from B, I will just say this is little b. When you go from A, this is little a. When you go from C, this is little c, right? And if you look at this, here is the center of the circle. Let's just put that down right here, all right? Let's just say, of course, the picture is not the best, but you know, excuse me again. All right, now our goal is to write an expression for the area of this triangle. Hopefully, it's in terms of R and maybe the angle A, B, and C because those are the things that's given, right? Hmm, how can we do that though? Well, fundamentally speaking, we always know that the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. So let me just write this down for you guys, and everything is going to be based on this, right? Okay, now, what's the base? Well, you can take either well, one of these three sides to be a base, up to you. And I will just say, let B be the base. So this right here is my base. Okay, so this right here. If you take this for the base, what's the height? That means you go from here and you draw a perpendicular line down. It has to 490 degree. So this right here will be the height, okay? And now, well, actually, let me just write this down. I was just taking B for the base. And now, hopefully, we can write an expression for the height based on the things that we have. If you look at this side of the triangle, we do have a right triangle. So let me just put that down. And I will just scale it down right here for you guys. So we have a right angle here. And this is angle A. And we have C. And the height is right here. Now, we know angle A, and this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse, right? So, opposite over hypotenuse, we can use sine. This right here is pretty much saying that we can say sine A is equal to H for the height over C. And of course, we can multiply C on both sides. We know H will be C times sine A. And in fact, this is, you know, I know many of you guys have seen it in the past. Let me write it down for you guys. This is equal to 1 half. The base is B, because we said it to be so. And the height is C times sine A. One way to remember this formula is this. Pick two sides and multiply them, and then also multiply the sign of the angle in between them. And of course, in the end, don't forget the 1 half. 1 half B times C, sine A, right? Sine is right here, and C and B right here. Of course, you can. You could have done the same with uh, a, a sine C right here, and you multiply one half with A and B. But you know, I'll leave that to you. Okay. So now, as I said, this right here is actually good because we have that expression that was given, right? Right. Because A B C. And now I would like to find out how can we actually get B and C in terms of the angles, right? Hmm. I really care about the angle, and I want to relate this to the R, all right? Let's go back to the picture. This time, we have to really utilize the radius. We know this is R. And of course, radius means that you go from the center of the circle to the circle. So for example, from here to here, you know this right here is R. And in fact, you can do it to all the three vertices. So from here to here, you know this is R. And lastly, from here to here, this has to be R as well, okay? Hmm. My goal is to solve for B 
Let, let's focus on B first. Okay, let's let's do B first, and hopefully C is some kind of similar. How can we get B? Well, I want to relate this to uh, the angle B and R. Okay, if you are going to use R, then you know this right here is another triangle, and this is pretty cool because we have a isosceles triangle, right? Because this is R, that's also R. Okay, and what's this angle? Do we know? Yes, we do. This right here is B. This right here, it has to be 2B. Why? This is called the Central Angle Theorem. And if this is a request, I will prove that in another video. But one thing you can know is that if you have a center right here, this is the central angle, right? And you have these two points, right? If you just pick another point, that's why we pick it right here, and extend these two sides, this angle, which was originally to be just B, this central angle will be 2B, okay? So I'm just going to use that in this video, that's 2B. Okay, and now let's see what else can we do though. We have an angle here and two sides next to it. We can use law of cosine. Let me write it down right here for you guys. Let's recall what's the law of cosine, okay? This is great whenever you have to find out a side, given that you have two other sides and the angle in between them, okay? We can use law of cosine. And uh, this is the slightly annoying part because the labeling, but this is what you can uh, use, okay? This is how I remember the law of cosine. First of all, this is the side that you want to find, right? So I will just put this down and square that. B square. This will be equal to this square plus that square, okay? It's really similar to the Pythagorean theorem, okay, almost. But anyway, this square is r square, and then you add this side square, which is also r square. It's really similar to the Pythagorean theorem, but the thing that you have to do is, you have to minus two times this side and that side. So let me put this down, two times r and r, and also multiply by cosine of the angle in between them, okay? So you will have to multiply this right here by cosine of 2b like this. So now, you see, we have this little b, and you have the r's, and also the capital B. And our goal is, of course, I want to get the little b by itself. So let's do some math. So this right here is, of course, just b squared, and this is going to be 2r squared, and we have minus 2, and of course, r times r is r squared, and then this is cosine of 2b like this. And I can factor out the 2r squared like that, right? So b squared is equal to this. And then we will get 1 minus cosine of 2b like that. Okay, this is good. I can take the square roots on both sides, but this is not good enough because we can do better. Why? Because <laughs> we don't really like to have double angle. We can actually break it down. Depends on how you want to look at this. Um, you can say this right here is really similar to sine square of something already, but just to maybe just show you guys slightly more work, right? Just to show you guys more steps to make it clear. Cosine of 2b, I can write that in terms of sine square of b. Why did I choose sine? Because I have sine right here already. So I want to make every, um, you know, everything the same, right? So let's do sine. This right here is the same as, let me just put this down right here. It's the same as 1 minus 2 sine square b, okay? So you have this part, and don't forget you have to distribute distribute. So in the end, you'll see b squared is equal to, we have the 2r squared, 1, and then when you do minus 1, you get 0, right? And then you have, yeah, this is pretty much 0, and then minus times minus becomes positive, so you multiply by 2 sine squared b, okay? And then, of course, you can just take the square root on both sides, but I'll just do you guys one more step. b squared is equal to 4r squared, sine square b, and then you take square roots on both sides. 
you don't need to worry about the minus part when you do the plus minus because B is positive for sure. We are talking about the length of the triangle, so you can rule off the, of the negative. But anyway, B right here is just this. Oh, square root of 4 we can actually work out, which is 2. And square root of r squared is just r. Square root of sine squared is just sine b, like this. So you see, we can write b in terms of r and the angle b, which is just that, which is really cool. And now, do you think we can do the same for c? Yes. So you pretty much just look at... Uh, this part for the little C right here, right? You just look at this part, right? And similarly, uh, use this is what we do, okay? I'll just tell you guys. Similarly, yeah, my, yeah, something like this. Similarly, you can say little C is equal to 2R sine C, okay? So this is pretty cool. And once again, just look at this triangle and pretty much do the same thing again. Now, finally, finally, put down the one half and the B, which is this right here, I'll just put down 2R sine B, right? And then for the C, it's this. So I'll multiply this by 2R sine C. And lastly, we have the sine A right here. So in the end, Let's see what we have. Area of this triangle is going to be this and that cancel, that's nice. So for the number wise, we have two. And for the R wise, we have R times R, which is R squared. And the beauty of this is that we have sine A, sine B, and sine C. So let me just write this down in the nice order. Sine A times sine B times sine C, right? So this is really cool. When you are given the radius, and if you happen to know all the angles, then you can calculate uh, the area of that triangle. And as I said, the purpose of uh, doing this is that I can use this to argue and to find what's the maximum possible triangle that we can have in an inscribed circle like that. But anyway, check out the next video, and you have a few ways to do that. I'm going to show you guys how to use the Calstreet method to do this by using the Lagrange multiplier. But anyway, at the moment, that's it.